everyone, welcome to this video. Um, in this video we're going to cover the very basics of micro-interactions and to do that we're going to be working with a tool called Envision Studio. Um, Envision Studio is quite a new tool if you'd like to say. Uh, it was released in the beginning of 2018 and um, you can compare it very much to a tool like Sketch and Figma, uh, though I think it is in terms of features not quite there yet. But one of the cool things it does is you can create micro interactions with um, InVision Studio. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go over the very, very basics. This is going to be a series of multiple videos where we're going to increase complexity over time. So um, please stick around, follow this tutorial and the next ones and you'll be good to go. Um, if you don't have the software yet on your laptop, please go to their website envisionapp.com forward slash studio and you can download it for free, which is awesome. Um, please do that and then come back and we're going to continue. Like I said, we're going to be covering the very basics of micro interactions today. So we're going to work with very basic shapes just to understand how to build micro interactions. And there's a couple things you have to know about them. Um, in order to have a full functioning uh, interaction for your users to use, you need a couple of things. Okay, so first we need to think of a trigger. So there has to be something that initiates this micro interaction or this animation, um, which is usually like a click on a button or um, toggling a switch, something like this. So there has to be a trigger. The trigger has to be followed by a set of rules and some visual feedback that the user is going to see. So what is the actual interaction made out of? And then lastly, we have to determine whether or not this is a one-time interaction or animation that the user is going to see, or if it's going to loop. Um, be very careful with looping because you don't want to annoy your users. It has to be like they're micro interactions. So they're supposed to be small and subtle. So please don't go too crazy on them. They should be very short and sweet and they're going to make your products look a lot nicer. But you have to understand that they have to be simple. Okay, so let's get started. Please open um, Envision Studio and um, just like in Sketch, you'll see a lot of uh, familiar things in the user interface of this um, software. Just like in Sketch, you can use the shortcut A to create an artboard. And since we're covering the very basics today, we're just going to work with small square artboards. And as you can see here, I've created an artboard of 400 by 400 pixels. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a square in it and then we're going to have a quick look at the actual interface that we're looking at. Um, please use the shortcut R on your keyboard to create a square. I'm going to give it some a nice fresh color so we can actually see what we're doing. And I placed it in the center of my artboard and you can see that you're in the center by the um, guidelines. Now let's have a look. So if you're familiar with any other design tools, again like Figma Sketch, um, this will look pretty familiar to you. Um, if not, let's go quickly go over the basics. On the left here we have our layer list. So right now we have one artboard with one rectangle in it. Then on the right side we have our properties panel. Now this property panel is constantly changing depending on which elements you have selected. So in our case that's a shape. Um, we can see here it's X and it's Y position, it's width and it's height, whether it's rotated or whether it has a border radius. Um, and over here we have the fill and the borders which is important so we can change color. Um, and we can also change the opacity of those colors or of the entire shape itself if you had multiple, uh, both a fill and a border applied to it, for example. Um, below we can play with shadows, uh, drop shadows or inner shadows and here interactions, this is what we're going to focus on today. Um, once we create interactions, they will appear over here. So let's create our first one. It's going to be super, super basic, but I'm going to take you through these basics in order to understand the more complex stuff later on. So we have artboard number one with a rectangle on it. 
What we're going to do is select the artboard and press Command D on your keyboard to duplicate. And what we're going to do on artboard number two is we're going to select the artboard and we're going to give this a background color. Now it's a little bit hidden since we don't have a background color yet we need to activate it so we're just going to say plus here on the right and then let's give it the same background color as the um, square currently is which is this color swatch. It doesn't really matter which colors you're using as long as you're using some kind of color. And then we're going to make the actual square in the center let's make that white so we have the opposite of what we had in R part number one. If we select a square on R part number one and we press the letter C on our keyboard, uh, that means that we're going to create an interaction on this particular element on the artboard. You'll notice that there's a blue outline and there's this line attached to your cursor, which allows you to bring that line over to the artboard you wanna connect this to, that make up the interaction. Okay, so we're going to say from artboard one to artboard two. So you can just click in artboard two and now they're linked and you will get a little drop down with a bunch of options. First of all, the trigger that I mentioned before, the micro interaction needs to be triggered somehow. So let's have a look at our options. First tab in this little menu is desktop. So these are all like the clicks and hover states that uh, we can all use on desktop. And in the second tab, we will see mobile. Very similar gestures. It's just tapping instead of clicking. Um, and it, we have swiping available to us now. And as you notice, there's no hover because there is no hover state on mobile. Um, let's go back to desktop and we're going to use the click trigger for now. So that means that while clicking on the blue square, the interaction will be triggered. We're going to navigate to artboard 2. We already chose that before. And for the first one, we're just going to use a preset. And in the preset, we can say slide left. And then you're going to hit save. It's important to hit save to actually save the interaction. And now you'll see on the right side in your properties panel that under interactions, what we just filled in in the, in the pop-up is actually now listed over here. And if you wanted to, you could make changes right here. Cool. That's the first one. Meaning once we click here, we go to our port number two. But let's create a loop so we can play around with it when we preview it. So we're going to do the exact same thing but then from artboard two back to artboard number one. So select the square on artboard number two. We press C on our keyboard and we're gonna click back in artboard number one. It will always remember the last chosen um, interaction details. So we will have exactly the same as we have before. The trigger is click, except that we're now navigating back to artboard number one. We have a preset and instead of slide left, let's say slide right. And then we're going to hit save. And again, you will see here at the bottom right, um, in the interactions, it will show up. Let's see what we've got. We're going to select our port number one. And if we press command P, we can preview our actual micro interaction. Again, this is very basic. We're going to get into the more smoother and cooler stuff in a second. Um, but let's go check out what we've got first now. Once we click the blue square, we're just bouncing back and forth between artwork number uh, one and two. And as you can see, they slide back and forth because we chose slide left and slide right. Cool. Let's move on to the next one. Um, just for the ease of use, I'm just going to duplicate artboard number one. So if you hold your option alt key and you can just drag down another artboard, which will be number three. We can actually reuse this uh, square. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. And that is the first artboard of our second um, micro interaction. So we're going to say uh, select artboard number three and we're going to press command 
D to duplicate. So what we're building right now is I want to build a micro interaction where this square is turning into a circle and it's going to be this really smooth transition. And um, on top of that, we're going to change its color um, and maybe the size a little bit as well. So on our board number four, let's change the color of the element. Pick whatever color you would like. And we're going to make it a little bit smaller in size. And on top of that, we're going to give this a border radius. Um, it is under, uh, important to understand that Studio needs to be able to recognize certain items on different artboards that they belong together. So it can create an um, animation between the differences of these shapes. Um, let me explain by actually showing you. So I'm going to add a border radius here. If you just hover over the word, word radius, you can drag your mouse. And we're going to drag it a bit more. And we have a circle. And it's very important to, to check out our layer list and more specifically the naming of our layers. So even though visually this is a circle right now, this is still called rectangle in the layer list. And that is important because since artboard 3 and 4, these rectangles, we want the animation to be on this same element. We want Studio to think that it's the same thing. Okay, so that during the animation, this blue square will turn into this rather than the blue square disappearing and the yellow circle appearing. We want the transition to be smooth within um, those shapes. So to demonstrate that, let's press uh, select the blue square on artboard number three. We're going to hit C on the keyboard and it's going to be connected to artboard number four. And um, what we're going to do here is the trigger is going to be click like before. But instead of uh, preset in transition, we're going to say motion. And we get some extra options here. So the default duration is 0 0.3 seconds. And like I mentioned in the beginning, interactions should be really short. Uh, we don't want animations lasting 5 seconds. Like that's, that's way too long. 0 0.3 seconds seems... Not a lot, but you'll see that it's just fine. In this case, we're going to say a duration of 0 0.3 seconds, and we don't need a delay. We'll get into that later. Just leave it to 0 seconds. We're going to hit Save. Then we're going on artboard number 4, select the yellow circle, and we're going to create an interaction back to artboard number 3. So we create a loop. The trigger is going to be click. We can use motion again, 0 0.3. Everything's fine, just hit save. Now let's preview that and see what is happening. You see now that Studio understands that it is one and the same thing, the square and the circle. And during the interaction of 0 0.3 seconds, it's doing a couple things. It's changing the size, because in the end state on artboard number four, the circle is small. So it's changing the size, it's changing color from blue to yellow, and it's changing the border radius from zero to something that resembles this circle. Now, if we change the timer on this for just for um, demo purposes, instead of 0 0.3 seconds, I'm actually going to make this three whole seconds. And I'm going to do the same on the interaction back. Three seconds. And let's preview it again so we can see kind of in slow-mo what is happening. Color is changing, border radius is changing, and the size is changing. Very slowly. And this is exactly what we want except for the timing. So let's put it back to 0 0.3 seconds. And this one as well. Great. And just with this concept, you can already um, design like um, 
button states, for example, what if somebody presses a button? You can already, just by changing um, color, you can already make really cool um, states of buttons. Let's move on to the next one. Next one, pretty cool. Uh, again, let's duplicate this particular artboard, number three. So hold the Option Alt key and you can just drag it down. And uh, this is artboard number five. And we want to make the square a little bit smaller. Something like this. And then we're going to duplicate the artboard. So Command D. And we will have artboard number six. What we're going to do here is actually going to make this a little bit bigger. And let's again change its color as well. And for this interaction, I want to work with rotation which is really cool. So in its initial state, the start state, R part number five, uh, you will see that in rotate we have a zero degree, which is the default. So what we're going to do in R part number six, we're gonna select a yellow square, and we're gonna play around with rotation so that during the animation, this square will rotate. If you have the square selected and you press command on your keyboard, you will see the little um, circular arrow. And now we can just pick this up and drag this. Well, let's do, let's do 180. If you're off by a few degrees, you can just go to this uh, rotate field and we're just gonna press, uh, type 180 and press enter. Cool. It's time to create the interaction. So blue square on artboard number five. We're gonna press C on our keyboard to go to artboard number six. And the trigger is going to be click. That's how we're gonna um, initiate this animation. We're gonna use motion 0.3 and we're gonna hit save. And let's create a loop so it's easier to preview. Select the yellow square on artboard number six, which is gonna go back to artboard number five. All the settings are perfectly fine as they are. Click motion 0.3 seconds. Let's select artboard number five and hit command P to preview. And there we go. We got a spinning square. Pretty neat. Uh, and again, this is a concept that you can use on a lot of cool stuff. Um, so keep it in mind. Please also save your document, which I have not done yet. Um, just so we can have a look back later on how we did stuff. Cool, that was rotation. And then I wanna work on the last one for today, which is actually a hover state, which is pretty cool. So let's duplicate our part number five and drag it down a bit so we have some space to work in. Okay, so we have artboard number seven now with the same blue square, which is totally fine. And this is perfectly fine for its begin state, so let's duplicate it uh, directly. So we'll have artboard number eight with a blue square as well. And Let's first of all, I see that we still have the interaction applied to it because uh, we duplicated the artboard. This happens a lot when you have an interaction that, or an interaction on an element that you've duplicated and that you just want to get rid of. Um, don't look for a trash can icon or anything, it's not there. Just right click on the interaction and say delete. And there we go. Now it's just back to basics being a blue square and we're going to do the same in artboard number seven right click on the interaction and say delete. There we go. On our board number eight, what we're going to do is we're gonna add some drop shadows so that we can create a hover state, kind of like buttons have on a lot of websites that when you hover over with your mouse, some kind of shadow appears. And to do that, we're gonna go here in the properties panel on the right and we see um, an item here called shadows and we're just gonna click the plus. Now by default, these shadows are usually very harsh. Um, we're gonna just up the blur a bit, something like this. Well, 24, I guess is okay. 
And we want it to be a little bit more subtle because the opacity is set to 50%. Let's bring that down a little bit. Uh, let's put it to 30, so at least we can still really see what we're doing. And we want this to be the hover state. So let's go back to our part number 7 and we're going to create the actual interaction. So we press C on our keyboard, uh, connect it to our part number 8. And now we got to change the trigger, because the trigger is no longer going to be a click. We want this to be mouse over, meaning hovering over something. So we're going to set this one to mouse over in trigger, and we can use a motion of 0 0.3, that's okay. And in this scenario, we definitely have to make an interaction back, because if you leave with your mouse pointer, with your cursor, you want to go back to its initial state, which is R put number 7. So on R put number 8, we select a square, we go back to 7. And instead of mouse over, we have to say mouse out. So when the cursor leaves the object, we can use motion 0 0.3 and hit save. Let's check it out what we've got. So now nothing is happening, but as soon as I move my cursor on top of the blue square, there we go. We have a hover state. And as you can see here at the top in the bar, this is currently R port number 7, which is our initial state. And as soon as I hover, it will change to R port number 8. So you always have a reference of which R port you're actually viewing right now. Pretty cool. I just want to add one more R board, because what if the user were to click in the hover state on the square? So let's take R port number 8 and duplicate it. And we're going to change the color, let's say. Let's go for pink. So we now have sort of like a sequence going on here. R port number 7, initial state. R port number 8 is the hover state. And then I want this to be when the user clicks during the hover state. So from R port number 8, we're going to create an interaction to number 9. And the trigger is not going to be mouse out or over. We're going to say click. And then it's going to go with motion 0 0.3 to R port number 9. And then on R port number 9, we could say a click interaction back to R port number 8. Can use the same settings, just hit save. Let's check it out again. Let's start at R port number 7 and then command P to preview. So this is working great. The hover state is still there. And then while I'm in the hover state, if I click now, it will bring me to R port number 9, which is the pink square. If I click again, I'm going to go back to 8. And I can just leave again uh, and go back to R port number 7. If I'm in R port number 9, so in the pink square, and if I just leave with my cursor, it automatically will just go back to R port number 7, which was the initial state. There we go. These are the very, very basics of micro interactions. Uh, we really use basic shapes to just understand the concepts and how this tool works. In the next episodes, we're going to build some uh, more complex stuff. So see you then. Thanks for joining and don't forget to subscribe.